Now as this is my last video before Christmas, Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays, now let's talk about Arsenal. So I've been going through a lot of players over the last few weeks and I wanted to talk about a player that I haven't really spoke about but is a big talking point on social media for Arsenal fans and that is the role of Eddie Nketiah in this Arsenal squad. So let's get into it. Now Eddie's a weird player because a lot of the fan base do like him but with a lot of the fan base not necessarily hate him but don't necessarily want him to play and be in the team. Now there is I'd say an overall divide but I'd say most people probably don't want him in the team would rather him be sold in January if we can get some good money for it which I think is a fair enough point. My point of view is that Eddie is a brilliant brilliant finisher he can show elite qualities but I don't think he's necessarily at the Arsenal level and I don't think he has been for a while so I don't think he deserved that new contract but in order to get a substitute striker it's going to be hard and obviously it looks like we're going to try and get a main striker next summer so I can understand keeping him on at the club especially because he is from the academy still. He's definitely good enough for a Premier League level team and I'm surprised that no one really tried to get him in the summer. I know we saw Balogun in the end, but I really thought some teams could do with him, especially in London. And honestly, it does seem like Eddie Nketiah probably won't be at the club in the summer if we even get to that point anyway. But I still think he's been a brilliant servant of the club. You do have to be realistic. He is older than Saka. He's older than Havertz. Like, and I could never really see him having that natural impact that they do in the team. He's a good striker and has very good movement in around the box. A lot of his goals are very good. And this year, he surprised me with some of his goals. That hat at Sheffield United, I mean, some of the goals were amazing. I never even thought he could score from that of the box to be honest but he doesn't show enough for the team he doesn't help the players around him and Martinelli's performances definitely drop off when he's in the team compared to someone like Trossard or Jesus up front making it a lot more fluid now personally I don't really think he's very good at hold up play or his link up play I think it's got better but I don't really think necessarily it's that good and as a finisher himself when he is not finishing the chances you've got to really think what else is he offering in that team he's scored some phenomenal goals for Arsenal but there's some chances he's really badly missed I remember right at the end of the game against Wolves for instance he's got a score that hits the post bit lucky but you know you wanted someone who's considered a finisher to score that. I think as well for a long time people wanted Eddie to have a chance and show his worth but now he's been given a lot of opportunities to show his worth. He's been our substitute striker for two years now being the only real option behind Jesus and obviously we all know about Jesus's injury problems. Then Ketty was starting a lot of Premier League games last season and a little bit this season and then other than some amazing performances such as Sheffield United and them lower league teams he hasn't really shown too much. But I honestly think he is probably the hardest player to judge in this Arsenal team because some games he really he does prove to you that he is a brilliant player. I mean, he's actually scoring over his XG this season as much as he did score a hat trick, obviously, against Sheffield United. And he's got around five goals and one assist in a 3.7 XG of goals. And to be honest, that is actually not a bad level. In the 800 minutes, he's played in the league as well. And the issue is, he's just very inconsistent. I think against PSV, he was all right. He scored a really good goal. And against Brighton, when he came on, he got a brilliant assist and did great play in the midfield. I think he works specifically well with Havertz. I'd like to see Arteta use that a bit more in the next few weeks if Nketiah has to come on to try and help us. If you're obviously we need it but when you look at his in-depth stats in the games it just feels like when he doesn't score he doesn't really do anything I think this is a major issue when Jesus isn't scoring it's not necessarily a big problem for Arsenal because he is helping with the play he might not be getting direct assists but you know he's definitely helping with some of the goals and some of the interplay within the wingers and Ketia kind of just is that predatory striker who just sits in the box and waits for his chances he has been getting better at scoring from just outside the box but obviously he's still waiting for the attack to basically come to him rather than going for it and he's not really been that encouraging this season and multiple games games in some games he's insane in some games he's bad but then the games he's good then he usually gets a goal and doesn't really do too much other than that and misses some good chances still and I know he's not someone that sits quietly on the bench he has complained about game time a lot and I still think he's been given a lot of game time considering his quality sometimes but I'd still say he is probably one of the better the backup strikers in the league I mean they look at Man City they don't really have a backup Alvarez plays anyway and then they've got no one else really can play there and Liverpool have brilliant options they've got a great attack inside but I look at other teams I've got Aston Villa got Duran I mean he's okay and he's not not Eddie's level though. Tottenham have Velez, not really proved anything yet. And Chelsea and Man United have Martial and Brogia. I don't think they're on the level of Eddie. But the way we want to play, I just don't know if he's it for us. I think he would be a brilliant option in other places. And this is why I'm still surprised that no one's even bothered to get him. Someone like Crystal Palace, who I think Mateta has been great in the last few weeks, but have been struggling for goals historically. Very defensive side. And they did a striker with obviously Zaha leaving, but they decided not to even bother getting an attack in that you've got reliable goals from. If you play Eddie enough he will give you goals and that is true and fair play to Eddie last season I guess he took his opportunities in moments there was definitely a point there was a few weeks or a month in January I think it was where he definitely carried Arsenal through a lot of fixtures and when we were worried about Jesus he actually weren't the reason we lost the league he was very much good and when he played he was very decent but I do give more credit to obviously the other players around him because they really stepped up when Jesus weren't there and I think he does have a bit of stigma around him not necessarily because he is from the academy because everyone loves that but I think it's just the fact that Arsenal never really spent a lot of money on him obviously he came 
came through the youth side and he's just been there for free. So he doesn't have that shiny new feel about him. So when he's on the bench, people look past it and go, ah, Eddie's coming on, it's whatever. But usually he does a decent job off the bench. And I still think he's a good player for the club. Like before, Nelson, for instance, has shown a lot of quality for Arsenal. But recently, and obviously with his poor injury issues, when he's on the bench, I'm not really thinking of anything. Because I'm like, well, it's Saka's probably not going to come off anyway. And he's just too injured to ever actually see him play very well. But Eddie is always there and he's very consistent. And he doesn't get injured a lot, so I will give him that credit as well. But I personally don't think Eddie really has a metric to talk about not playing. I think he's played a lot considering. I know we've had injuries and we've still sometimes not played and played Trotter out front or Havertz or some other options. But I do think he's played considerable a lot considering what he has actually brought to Arsenal. And considering I see him as probably a starting striker at someone like West Ham or Crystal Palace, very, very solid side, maybe not even West Ham. I don't know if that's necessarily enough to even be in the Arsenal sub bench at this point because we are very much, much better than we were. And even when we weren't very good, he struggled to get into the team. Obviously, we did have Lacazette, but he couldn't score. And it's been announced that Arteta is looking to sell him for around 40 to 50 mil, obviously being added tax because he signed that contract not long ago and it's in January, which I think is fair enough, even though it is still a lot of money, realistically, that we're asking for. But I guess he is English and he has Premier League experience. And the main thing is, is they're suitors. I've heard that there's three clubs that have already contacted Arsenal about Eddie and Ketia for January. So when there's that many interested and maybe not concrete, maybe they don't want to put an offer in, but you know when there's people that actually want him, you can probably put the price up a little bit, sort of make them battle out for it. Especially because we know these Premier League clubs have money. And I think for Eddie and Ketia's sake, he probably should leave Arsenal. I, he's done very well to stay here and, he, you know, he ummed and ahmed about signing that new contract when he did. He could have left on a free, decided to sign it in the end and does seem like he's complained a lot about performances and him not playing. But he's played a lot, I would say, considering where we are at level the team. I find it a bit weird that Arteta would just willingly sell him or apparently he has because he has defended him a lot and he gave him that new deal and he's tried to keep him at the club for a very long time. I also don't think Arsenal are going to buy a striker in January. I think it'll most likely be this summer where we go for one of our big targets like Ossie Men or Ferguson. And that is the reports that are coming out recently. But if Arsenal do sell Eddie and Ketia, if we get a big offer like £50 million for him in this January window and we decide to sell him, surely then we're going to have to pick up some sort of striker because we can't just have Jesus who's not got the best injury record and maybe trust that as a backer and that being our only options. I guess you could always play Havertz there if you want to change that left centre mid role and then maybe bring in another midfielder. That is definitely an option, but it'd be very interesting because I hear so many rumours about him leaving, but I'm not necessarily sure on what our plan is when we want to get a striker in the summer. Overall, I think Eddie Nketiah is a brilliant player, but I don't think he's necessarily the right fit for Arsenal and I don't think he has shown enough in the long period, even though he's a great games for Arsenal to be proven in the squad. I think him sitting on the bench would be perfect for us. I think he's still a great option, but I don't think that his career he should just sit on our bench for too much longer, even though he is on a good wage. But I feel like I've rambled on too long. Let me know in the comments what you think. Do you think Eddie should stay? Do you think he should go? Or do you think he's even good enough for Arsenal in the first place? What are your opinions about him as a whole? If you obviously want to talk to me about this, follow me on Twitter. And if you like the video, please like and subscribe. This will be the last video before Christmas. So I hope you guys enjoy Christmas and have a great time. And obviously, I hope Arsenal have a great result against Liverpool. If you like this video, please go and watch my video from yesterday where I talk about Saka being disrespected on Twitter. And other than that, thank you for watching.